I used to love Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig and Joe DiMaggio. And now anybody puts that uniform on, like I say, are my heroes. Give something back to your country. And at Arlington National Cemetery, a very special group of soldiers remember those who made the supreme sacrifice in service to their country. They honor the fallen known only to the ages, keenly aware of the singular honor to be chosen for this duty. NBC's Jim McLeshevsky has a rare behind-the-scenes look at a solemn service of the Old Guard. The soldiers of the Army's Old Guard simply call it walking the mat. But it's the U.S. military's most hallowed ritual, standing guard over the Tomb of the Unknowns at Arlington National Cemetery. We're personifying the slogan, never leave a fallen comrade. Well, joining the Army or becoming an astronaut, either one would be a highly respectable career path. Well, imagine doing both. Coming up next, the four soldier astronauts serving our country in war and in space exploration. Well, a lot of people don't know this, but four astronauts are also U.S. Army soldiers. Yeah, and one of them is actually part of the Endeavor crew that's getting ready to launch this weekend. Jay Gray reports on this elite group that's doing double duty as heroes and space explorers. Boost to ignition and liftoff. Of In what is shuttle. already an exclusive club of American astronauts, they are an even rarer breed. Being an Army astronaut, yes, yeah, it's a little bit different. Currently, there are only four soldiers in the Army NASA detachment, trading the boots and guns of the Green Army for the back rooms at Johnson Space Center, learning to operate a robotic arm. Fatigues have given way to a full spacesuit, then six-hour training sessions underwater. It's a much different environment than their previous Army experience in the war zone. Space is literally a world away from the battlefields in Iraq and Afghanistan. But these Army astronauts are quick to point out, at their core, the two missions actually have a lot in common. In my mind, there's a very, very close connection because in both cases, they're really a team sport. Uh, if you're in the military, everybody has to do their job impeccably in order to succeed. And the same here at NASA. As soon as those engines light underneath you, uh, you're very, very thankful for the training. Colonel Doug Wheelock called on his Army training during a critical spacewalk to repair a torn solar array on the International Space Station. It would have been impossible for me had I not had my Army experience. An experience these soldiers are stretching to its limits at NASA. One of the prime missions of the, of the, of the, of the soldiers on the ground is to seize and hold the, the high ground. And uh, so it's the ultimate high ground. But even in orbit, they're never that far away from those still on the front lines. It's kind of a glamorous job to be able to go fly in space. But, but truly, my heart is with all those soldiers and officers that are serving overseas, defending our country. Once your army, aren't your army for life. Even in space. What an awesome view. Jay Gray, NBC News, Johnson Space Center. And one of the four army astronauts, like I said, will be on this next shuttle mission. It's Colonel Tim Copra. He will be on board Endeavor when it launches on Saturday. Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News in high definition. USC School of Dentistry holds its graduation tomorrow morning. You might think of it as a high-priced education, but for some dentistry students, it's not costing them a dime. Eyewitness News reporter Lisa Hernandez tells you how they'll pay back their education by serving in the Army. From Fox Richmond, this is Fox First Sports. I think Kyle Busch is getting so good he could win on foot. Let's see if he can try it. All right, earlier today at RIR, over 270 students from across Richmond had a chance to learn about teamwork and leadership from Ryan Newman, who will start 10th tomorrow, as well as Army Drill Sergeant of the Year Mike Nolan and Purple Heart recipient Joshua Napier of Gloucester. A panel of speakers addressed students on the importance of education and potential career opportunities in both motorsports and the military. Students also competed in a variety of physical contests and, of course, spent a little quality time with the 2008 Daytona 500 champ. It's a very important time in their life. They have a lot of decisions to make. They need to further their education. They can do it in the U.S. Army. They can go to college. They can, they can go to work. But um, ultimately, it's just trying to give them some information to help them out and make them, make them uh, aware of maybe what uh, an opportunity or a decision is for their lives. You see this wheel I'm fooling with here? Uh -huh. Doesn't look like much, does it? Looks like something maybe off a uh, go-kart mm -hmm. or... You know, it's not not too impressive. I'll tell you what. You get about 30 feet down the row here, 
We've got some tires you cannot believe. Tony Schumacher is with us, and along with uh, some representatives from America's Fighting Forces, America's Finest. Uh, thanks for getting up so early for us. We appreciate it. No, no problem. Now, what do you call this machine? Uh, you must have a pet name for it. <laughs> a nickname of some kind? Uh, well, six-time world champ car would be just fine. That'll do. Very good. <laughs> well, you know, let us step aside, and we'll let the camera swing right on down to the... Uh, well, this is, this is sort of the nerve center where you sit. Today I sit here and I tell you how proud I am. And anything I can do for whatever is necessary, I'm there. 